Hey guys, I here. Um, we're ready to try and play FTL well. Um, let's head in and see what we can do. And we're going to be doing a Kestrel A run. Um, this is obviously important, really, because it's the first ship. Well, it's the only ship you have at the start, so you have to kind of get semi-proficient with it um, to unlock other ships to, you know, maybe beat the game the first time. It's uh, it's not a bad ship, but it is quite difficult to get your head around. It's very vanilla, you know, it's, it's got nothing that makes it stand out. It's got your standard four weapon slots, two drone slots, no additional systems. Uh, it does come with decent weapons. The Artemis is a good missile, um, probably the only good missile in the game, in my opinion. I, I don't like missiles much. And the Burst Laser 2 is a, a weapon that will see you right through to the bitter end. It is a good good um, laser weapon. Very useful for breaking down layers of shields once, it's, um, you know, once you start meeting two shield enemies, it loses its ability to do damage a little bit. But it still retains its ability to, you know, hopefully take down three shield bubbles. So, uh, with that said, um, I've moved that over to the left here so that one bar of damage doesn't disable its charging. Make sure that my engines, weapons, and piloting are all manned, and uh, we'll dive on in. Uh, oh, look, a distress beacon. Let's go and see if we can help someone out here. Get down to the surface. Uh, Oh, no, okay, he didn't make it. Now, that's a risky um, event, that one, because it can cost you a member of crew as well as uh, gaining you one. But, you know, you've got to take the risks early on. You've got to try and build up your crew. Um, it is worth taking those uh, those risky options. If you have an advanced med bay, uh, you can uh, rescue that dude anyway. It gets you the extra, extra person. So that uh, sent something towards me there. So I'm just going to wait and see what it was. Uh, oh no, possibly not. I thought I saw it fire a boarding drone, but um, I don't think it has. I think it's only the drone sound played because it was uh, this anti-drone that they've got going, which isn't going to hopefully cause me too many problems. Well, that was lucky, wasn't it? That wasn't. So, uh, I'm going to use a missile here to try and, uh, there we go, take down their weapon systems. And uh, The reason you know I, I did that is because I got lucky on that first round. The second round was going to start doing me damage, so it's worth focusing a bit of fire, but generally speaking you want to conserve your Artemis missiles early on in the run. Use it where you have to, not just because you want to. Um, I think they've got a repair drone on, on board actually on this ship, because they're repairing that weapon system very quickly. Um, so I'm just going to keep focusing my hammering here. I won't even bother damaging we um, their shields, because all I want to do is just keep hammering weapons, keep those suppressed, stop them firing, hopefully, firing missiles. This one might get a shot off, actually. Uh, oh, yeah, no, just missed it, just did it in time. Uh, keep them damaging, and, you know, the fight drags on a little bit more, but I'm not taking damage, because I'm keeping those weapon systems suppressed. And there we go, and we've won. Um, you know, I could have taken time to switch my weapons over to uh, their shields, take their shields down, uh, but by that time they would have fired another missile, and they'd already gotten lucky by missing one. I didn't want to test that luck by letting them fire another one. Um, so I've got 40 scrap, we're getting a, another distress beacon, let's give this one a go, see if we can get unlucky here. Try and dislodge the ship, there we go, we've earned some more um, scrap, so that's nice. Another distress beacon, we're just being everyone's white knights here aren't we, cruising across the sector. Hail them and uh, spark up a battle. Uh, I'm not reading out all the all the events; they're a little bit boring, to be honest. So this um, this ship's weapon loadout. You know, you should always start in pause and just have a good look at what the enemy's got, how they're going to do you damage. So this stun, um, you know, it could stun my crew and it'll take my shields down. But he's got nothing else to follow it up. If he had a beam or a laser and he had that stun eye on, that could be a bit worrying. As it is, it's the missile that's going to do me damage as ever because it'll just come straight through my shields. So he'll fire one, um, and I'll just have to see whether I get lucky with that or not. And I got lucky again. Uh, and uh, I've taken out his missiles there, which is nice. So again, I can just keep hammering away, and I'm, you know, I've taken the missile down, so I'm just going to keep doing damage and not, uh, not worry too much about uh, you know, using a missile, wasting a missile on him here, because you know, it'll take me one extra volley of fire with the old uh, burst laser here. And away we go. Time of beaten. Oh, we've got some more scrap off them as well. So that's nice. So I'm just checking here that we don't have a store that I should be saving scrap for um, within a jump or two. Uh, well, within a jump, because obviously I don't know. And I'm just 
it's going to go straight for my level 2 shields. So that will hopefully now pay off uh, dividends as we progress. Because now if somebody's got, you know, an enemy's got a laser and a beam or something like that, uh, or a loadout like this, which has got two, uh, a, a chain laser here that will fire two shots, I can simply uh, power up my second shield bubble and not worry about it. There we go. And you can see what happened there was I actually uh, hit weapons and powered down his bomb just as the bomb was about to detonate on my ship, which is uh, quite handy. If you, you know, if you cut power to it, it stops the bomb actually detonating it, even if they've uh, just launched it, as it were. Which is pretty good to know. Um, he's not firing at me anymore, so I can power my oxygen back up and charge that back up so we're not sitting around waiting for it later. So, you know, once you've got the weapons offline, uh, you can shoot around at other systems as your heart's desire. It's always worth taking out piloting because that means that every, sh every shot after that will hit home. Oh, there we go. Gosh, loads of fuel and a bit more scrap as well. There's a store, but I've only got 30 scrap. And the Artemis sells for 10, as far as I remember. So it's not worth me jumping into that store yet because I haven't got enough... Um, I haven't got you know, enough cash to actually buy anything decent anyway. What I will buy is a second uh, bar of power so that I can power up everything that's useful to me at once. And then we can uh, crack on. There we go. So this is a slightly odd sector layout here because I'm just trying to plan my um, run into. the exit beacon, because uh, it hasn't got a cluster of beacons around or behind it, you have to be a little bit careful. Now that is an absolutely, well, yeah, it's a pretty good deal to be honest, <laughs> so I'm going to take it. There we go. I don't have to worry about fuel for the rest of the run now. Um, drone parts are valuable, but I haven't got any way of using them at the minute, so I can safely make that swap, and it means I can, you know, help people in distress with low fuel, you can't get a lot of uh, scrap back for that. And here we have a slaver, I haven't got enough uh, scrap to buy the slave. And what has he got? He's got missile hacking and a beam drone. So, let's see what he hacks. Sensors, so I can live with that. And my uh, game plan here is basically to hopefully do him enough damage that I can make him reconsider his options and uh, offer me a slave for free. Because I could really do with a bit of extra crew right now. There we go. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm actually gonna fire a missile. There we go, got Mort. A friendly mantis, who could be very useful to us for seeing off uh, borders and, and that kind of thing, or if we get a teleporter later, we can, you could be part of our boarding crew. Well worth having. So, um, so I've got my three boring humans, uh, the three principal uh, points in the ship here. And, you know, there, there are better races to do all of that, but you only start off with three humans. Uh, so they'll, they'll do fine, and, and they'll probably stay there, to be honest, because you've got to keep people in a single position to skill them up as much as possible. And um, having either an NG or a uh, Mantis on shields isn't a bad idea because it doesn't cripple your ship in quite the same way as the other posts if you have to have a, a crew member who's going to run off to repair things or to attack borders. It does work well having um, roaming crew on shields because it, it's not quite the same hit to your ability uh, when they leave their post. Sun's detected. So I'm just trying to plan my run in here to the end beacon as best I can. Uh, if I went there, no, because that's actually that is potentially only one and a half jumps away. Could be risky. Could work. I'm just trying to maximise uh, the number of beacons I can visit. So if I was to jump here, here, here. But then I'm stuck up here at a dead end. 
So that'd be one, two, three jumps potentially before the exit. But if I did this, I could get three and do one additional. And I'm just trying to work out whether this is one and a half jumps away or not. And I don't think it is actually. I think that will get swallowed up. So in that case, my best option is to jump in that zigzag fashion towards the exit. Uh, I'm going to ignore the refueling platform because it can do you hull damage and I've got so much fuel that I don't need any um, any more. There, there are a couple of options here. One is that it does you hull damage. The other is you can get borders as well. Um, and third is you can get some free fuel. But uh, I'm going to ignore that in this event just because I, I'm not desperate for fuel. Normally I would take the risk but not with 30 fuel on board. Uh, another slaver. Oh, we will never surrender our crew to slavers. Uh, so again here you can see that uh, there's no damage he can do me uh, with that ion, but he can damage me obviously with the, with the missile launcher, so that's going to be my, my principal concern will be avoiding those missiles. And uh, there's not a lot you can do that, other than keeping your uh, helm manned, keeping your engines guy on there. There's not a great deal you can actually do to uh, prevent Laser, uh, prevent missiles coming in uh, in the early game. Oh look, another another mantis. How oh, interesting. Uh, mantis are poor at repairing. The only reason I'm using them is because there's two of them there, and they'll do it the same as any one person. By the time we've marched a person off the sh across the ship and back, they will uh, they will have repaired it at much the same rate. Why are you over there? So. Uh, <clears throat> there we go, we're, we're building up our crew a little bit. We've got our uh, core positions on the ship manned. I'm going to hop into this nebula beacon. Oh, and it's got a power as well. And we'll manually search for some stuff. And we've got an anti personnel drone, that's not bad, is it? Handy. And then jump on out to the exit. Yes. So this is one of those slightly annoying uh, events because there, there isn't re there doesn't really appear to be a great outcome of this unless you've got loads of missiles to give away, which we simply don't. Um, if you take this blue option, it doesn't. Act, the blue options are generally good, but this one isn't because they just tell you, well, thanks for firing a missile, but uh, we need to uh, we need more missiles than that. So uh, you can give them five missiles, in which case they pay you. Um, but I need my missiles desperately because I've only got ten and I'm reliant still on my Artemis to some extent. Uh, so there you go. That's what happens if you click that blue option. Uh, so you're just going to have to decline. And uh, move on. So there we go. That's the end of Sector 1 in the, in the Kestrel. We've uh, got ourselves to two shield bubbles. We've got ourselves an extra couple of crew members. And uh, we're only taken a couple of damage against the ships that we faced and uh, that's pretty much how you want to be so uh, we'll be heading on to into sector 2 and see how that goes uh, in the next section